Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Pam Kastner and I have the honor of serving as Patent State Lead Consultant for Literacy. And welcome to Patent's webcast series, Leaders and Learning in Literacy. In this webcast series, we, have, we speak to leaders in the field of literacy as well as practitioners to share resources with you. Today I have the honor of welcoming, welcoming Dr. Peg Schaefer, uh, Director of Elementary Education at Delaware Valley School District, and interventionist Lori O'Malley. We are here today to talk about their experiences with the dyslexia screening and early literacy intervention pilot. Delaware Valley is one of eight school districts that has taken part in this very important pilot program in our state. So I'm going to turn this over to Dr. Peg Schaefer so she can share with you the journey that Delaware Valley has been on and how that journey began. So Dr. Schaefer, would you share with our audience how did the Delaware Valley become engaged with the dyslexia screening and early literacy intervention pilot program? Sure. Well, welcome and thank you for having us today. Um, well, we started in the summer of 2014. A pen link came out from Pennsylvania Department of Education that um, shared with us the um, Act 69 legislation mm -hmm. that was passed by the House of Representatives and the Senate in the General Assembly in the Commonwealth. And the legislation had very explicit criteria for school districts to participate in the pilot program. First, you had to have a universal screening program. Mm -hmm. um, second, you had to have full day kindergarten. They were looking initially for four large districts to participate. They wanted districts that had over 5,000 students. However, um, once the pilot began and they started to look at um, equity, mm -hmm. they also selected four additional school districts that were smaller districts because they wanted to make sure that they could replicate the data from the study as it rolled out across the Commonwealth, not just in large school districts. Mm -hmm. So full day kindergarten, you had to have a universal screening and you had to agree to collect data throughout the four years of the pilot. So that summer of 2014, we wrote a proposal to participate in the program. Then the Department of Education sent out interviewers to come mm -hmm. out and meet with the superintendent and myself to make sure that Delaware Valley was fully committed to participating in the pilot program. And then a few months later, we found out that we were, we were gleefully so found out that we were accepted to participate <laughs> mm -hmm. in the program. Mm -hmm. um, and the pilot training began in the spring of 2014, late spring of mm -hmm. 2014. It actually began with um, letters training. Mm -hmm. From Patton? Patton, mm -hmm. our patent consultant was Andrew Bell. Yes. And uh, we love Andrew. She was absolutely she fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, and she came out along with um, a, a group of other people, Leanne and mm -hmm. Kim Jenkins. They came out and provided uh, letters training that had a dyslexia connection component. Yes. So they added to it, and all of our kindergarten teachers were trained in letters. Mm -hmm. And that was the initial um, uh, initial professional development that was provided. In addition to that, we had to identify a group of interventionists that mm -hmm. wanted to participate, Lori's one of them, mm -hmm. that wanted to participate in the pilot with actually providing intensive instruction to students that potentially could have dyslexia. So the whole premise is to intervene early, early mm -hmm. and provide service to students so they don't become reading disabled. Mm -hmm. So that was our goal overall and is our goal, obviously, as trying to provide sound education to our students. So we started to provide interventionist training along with classroom teacher mm -hmm. training. So as I explained earlier, um, we, we, I, I kind of phrase it as two tracks of a train. Yes, I like and, that analogy. And there are, there are a, a track of the, of the train that has interventionists on and mm -hmm. the other track of the train has classroom teachers that are providing multi-sensory explicitly training students in strategies. And then when those tracks meet and they converge, mm -hmm. that's where the students are involved. When we're, when we're working together, to um, shape children and uh, provide sound instruction for them. So that's kind of an overview mm -hmm. of where we started. Um, once we started our intensive training, all the teachers that were part of the interventionist track of the train had to complete a 100-hour practicum mm -hmm. yes. along with 60 hours of lecture. That also included intensive observations, mm -hmm. the lesson planning, with each lesson that was written, it also required uh, one, at least an hour, mm -hmm. of planning and preparation mm -hmm. for each of those 100 lessons. And this is on top of their daily work assignments. Yes. So this is really going above and beyond. 
Um, and then there were teacher observations where the clinicians from um, the Allentown Dyslexia Center would come in and do provide supervision mm -hmm. for those teachers as part of their practicum, provide direct feedback, grade their lesson plans. Right. The teachers had to do readings, um, book reports. Uh, they also had to, um, Lori, help me out. What else? Test. Tests. They had Test. to participate mm -hmm. in tests and pass the tests. Yes. <laughs> and then overall average. And then at the end of the year, they would complete their level one. Mm -hmm. We've now proceeded on to mm -hmm. we now have Lori, who is a trainer, and she can talk a little bit about the training process to get to the trainer level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you mind if I back up just sure. a little bit? Because I know when we were discussing earlier, we were talking about how legislation in Pennsylvania and in many other states actually was led by the parents, parents the parents are really the the ones the who impetus made, for the yes, whole pro are. the whole program so. how it kind of came to be was a group of parents um, went to the legislature mm -hmm. and said we've got to do something we have children that are yes. dys dyslexic they have severe reading problems and we have teachers in school districts across the Commonwealth that are really trying to do their best. Mm -hmm. They're trying to do whatever they can to help these students, but it's just not enough. They're not meeting their needs. And these students, they're not, they don't have cognitive dif difficulties. No. They are not, there's not an error in their IQ. They are just struggling. Their brains function differently. Correct. On MRI imaging, you could actually see that the, the part of the brain with, with learners that naturally get the reading skills mm -hmm. it is totally highlighted differently on those MRI scans mm -hmm. than the atypical learner the learner that cannot cannot read they may be brilliant in mathematics social studies science mm -hmm. but they just cannot pick up a book and read if you read to them they pick up those skills automatically because they have wonderful listening skills and great, great. wonderful yeah. problem yeah. problem Voc solving vocabulary vocabulary right. but they yeah. just cannot Language. read so trying so on those MRI scans it's just amazing that if you take a look at them that their brain does highlight but it's different areas of right. the brain which is why multi-sensory instruction yes. it, and so explicit essential. is so essential because you can use those different areas of brain mm -hmm. of the brain to compensate for mm -hmm. the areas that don't and then those students can pick up and mm -hmm. read so providing that instruction to teachers is essential because it's not that these students can't learn, they learn differently. Yes, and they, they learn in a direct, explicit manner, and all kids benefit from direct, explicit instruction, multi-sensory instruction, right. and it harms none. Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely essential for some students. And I think that was a, the, the, the call from the parents in Pennsylvania and across the nation. They have really led the oh, way. Led the fight. They have, and I, yeah. I do want to point out, because you mentioned um, letters training, which is uh, in the science of reading, uh, but you mentioned the Dyslexia Connect and give a shout out to Nancy Hennessy, who is a former past president of the International Dyslexia Association. She did work with Patton to infuse letters with Dyslexia Connect so that we were really making the specific connections about how kids are wired differently. differently. And so for the most part, I speak personally on my end, uh, I did not learn this in my undergraduate, in my master's in reading, in my doctorate, nor anywhere else. Really where I came to know the science of reading was through letters. And so it's oftentimes a big aha to our teachers when they find out about the science of reading and about how important multisensory you know, instruction is. So you talked about these two tracks. Right. And really, the, the pilot was also about these two tracks in the sense that um, Patton was responsible for really um, infusing the science of reading and multisensory structured practices and structured literacy into the core. And uh, of course, then there was very um, you know, rigorous training in Orton Gillingham for many of the interventionists uh, for those kids who are deemed you know, to be at risk. So the pilot really, as you said, was not about labeling kids as having dyslexia. It was about intervening Amazing. early and then uh, applying very good evidence-based practices in the core and in tier two and tier three. And um, in your presentation today uh, earlier with our teams, really that talk about that common language and common practices. Right. So everyone right. was uh, speaking the same, same language, language, had the same theoretical underpinnings and underpinnings. Absolutely. And then um, that the consistency in language and in classroom environments, you know, has really made a profound impact. I know we're talking with you today, but of course we had eight school districts involved in the pilot. We'll be joining us uh, hopefully in another webcast, but 
that is uh, what we've seen when we visited the schools is um, this, this uh, understanding of how kids learn to read. Uh, these foundational underpinnings in the science of reading along with this multi-sensory structured language and structured literacy and how that knowledge in a deep way, knowing it deeply, impacts uh, the instructional practices and the um, outcomes for kids have just been astounding. Mm -hmm. And that's really what this pilot program is about, about um, helping kids and teachers so that we're not, you know, saying a child has a reading disability when really they just haven't, haven't had the effective instruction that they might right. need. Mm -hmm. and, and again, I want to point out it's not at the fault of the teachers. It's, no, it's, it's a matter that we don't have we don't have pre-service programs or masters in reading programs that truly understand the multisensory approach right. to reading instruction. And I think that when, once we get on board, we will be able to halt the, Some of this, the errors. Yes, for sure. but, but every teacher out there, I truly believe, is doing the, the best, best that they can. Right. Yeah. Um, but there are certainly, we always want to grow mm -hmm. and do things better. And this pilot clearly, clearly helped us to do a better job. And I'll let yeah. Lori speak a little yeah. bit about her journey. Yes. Yeah. yeah, when I um, was first asked to participate, I was 28 years in. I mm -hmm. taught full day kindergarten and at, at that point I was in first grade and it was my love to teach reading and I did go through letters training and that was just mind blowing to me and like I was just so excited and learned so much and the same thing like that aha mm -hmm. why did anybody I tell know. me this uh -huh. oh, sad. and um, you know and I was <laughs> immediately implementing right. some of the things mm -hmm. that I had learned there and um, so then I was the pilot came along and I was asked to participate which I did and it was a struggle and a journey and it was a lot of hard work but every time we'd go we'd have something in lecture and we'd, I'd run back to my classroom and mm -hmm. easily implement some of these procedures and strategies and spelling rules and generalizations mm -hmm. and and all these things and really found out maybe things that I wasn't doing quite right when I thought mm -hmm. I would knew everything mm -hmm. at that point yeah, you know, I think 28 the motto years of the in <laughs> pilot overall was that Maya Angela yeah. mm -hmm. quote that when we know better we we, we do, do better, better. Right. So, and I was always yeah. trying mm -hmm. to improve myself yes. and learn more no yeah. matter you know how many years I had in and so then we started and we, we started the summer before and we had um, the lectures and there were tests that we had to take and we had to read lots of books and chapters in the Birch book. Mm -hmm. um, Judy Birch. Yeah, we had maybe five exams that we had to take and then um, the 100 lesson plans which were very intensive to write and they, very time consuming. And then we had, um, they came out to observe us 10 times and they also reviewed our lessons. So it was a practicum mm -hmm. which was great. And then I continued, that was the initial level, and then I continued on to um, the, the intermediate level. Same thing again, I had some class time, not as much, not as many um, observations, some more books to read and papers to write and all. And um, I finished that with another 100 hours and observations too. And then the third year mm -hmm. I went, oh I kept going, I kept going because I had such a passion mm -hmm. and a love for you it. And mm -hmm. um, I went on to be a supervisor level, which would uh, enable me to help a trainer and I could go and observe trainees and mm -hmm. um, provide feedback for their lessons and their lesson plans. And then this year, um, we, I stopped teaching two days a week mm -hmm. and we have six trainees and I'm shadowing a trainer wow. from the original center mm -hmm. and um, I did all the lecture, the 50 hours of lecture and I did, um, I did everything. I was just shadowing wow. her so I did the observations for the six of them, 10 mm -hmm. each, reviewed their lesson plans and they're all about just about done oh, wow. so, and I had to in the meantime do 200 hours of lesson plans myself this year and 200 last year as well. So in total, I put in 600 hours oh my in my gosh. practicum of lesson planning. So, um, so I'm, it's, it's exciting, but it's it, I, it came, it's coming to an end of my training, and it's been my life for four mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. I I thought I'd be jumping for joy, but <laughs> it's like it's just it, it's just it's ending. But it doesn't feel like it's mm -hmm. ending because we're we're still continuing to do this. So now we our work is to just keep this going and mm -hmm. do what we can to support our teachers and and make this program the best, best it can, can be, mm -hmm. you know. And we quick, went, going back when the f pilot first started, you know, we quickly found out that these procedures, these strategies, this approach works best for everybody. Every, everybody yeah, every that was learning to yeah. read mm -hmm. will benefit by mm -hmm. this. And we've seen such great gains. Mm -hmm. And we continue to see great gains. And like Peg had said, our district was a high performing district in the beginning to mm -hmm. begin with. Mm -hmm. right. And we've gone even even, even further, further than that and it continues to it continues to improve yeah. what what we did do after the after the second year of the pilot what we saw was that 
every ch every child can benefit from mm -hmm. the program. So we took the scope and sequence that we were kind of using um, in our in our intervention program, and we looked at well, wouldn't this benefit all children? Mm -hmm. So our teachers, our interventionists, sat down for many many weeks, mm -hmm. and they that. devised a curriculum that that parallels the intervention curriculum, mm -hmm. but it's for in-class instruction for every single student. And it was really yeoman's work. I, I mean, they mm -hmm. really yeah. did a phenomenal job, and we keep tweaking it, but, mm -hmm. but basically it has um, all of the, all the phonics skills, the word skills, the spelling skills, everything that the end, and writing and reading because that's the end goal. Mm -hmm. But it's it's really following the scope and sequence of the Orton-Gillingham program, mm -hmm. but it's an in-class mm -hmm. implementation. It's so, so valuable. So every student, kindergarten, first, and second grade, gets the program for a half hour a day, mm -hmm. um, four days a week. So they're getting two complete Orton-Gillingham lessons. And then the students that require intervention mm -hmm. get an additional 40 mm -hmm. minutes, four days a week, and they're pulled out. So those students that need more support are getting Orton-Gillingham practices mm -hmm. and programming yeah. twice a day, mm -hmm. um, four days a week, and all the classroom students are getting it half a day. In addition to that, we've provided parent workshops I know. so that they Talk understand. Talk about the, uh, the connection though, you made with your curriculum with your parents because I, that is just going above and beyond, beyond. and um, also how you're sharing with parents the procedures for how you're engaged yeah. with OG. I think that's, that is something I don't think I've heard of any school district even in the pilot doing, so please share that with everybody. Well, one of the things that was um, a, big, a big deal was that the parents, you, know, you get your weekly spelling list. Mm -hmm. I could just yeah. use that as an, right. as an <laughs> example. Um, you always get your weekly spelling list, you go home, you memorize them on Friday, you take a test. Well, we decided that's not really the correct way to teach spelling. You need to teach students the patterns mm -hmm. of the language mm -hmm. and then have them implement it independently, not because they memorized a list. Right. But if they know the R control vowels, if they know OR, then we're gonna give them words with that. If they're learning EE, they're gonna get right. words with that. So we are going to teach them the patterns of the language and then give them random words That's that right. follow that right. pattern. To see and if they can transfer and generalize. if they can transfer yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So we imagine now the parents aren't getting their mm -hmm. weekly That's spelling list on Monday oh, yes, to practice. Was. So we had workshops and we explained to them what we were doing. It's logical, it mm -hmm. makes sense, mm -hmm. however, Trying to convince a Tradition, parent that, you know, right. and, mm -hmm. but that's not how we learned. Right, right. So, you know, to trying to convince that. So we held workshops and we taught parents how to code mm -hmm. words. We taught them about the patterns of language. Now parents are all on board, mm -hmm. but it was a huge pendulum yeah, shift. It's so for proactive them. for you to really. And get, I mean, this began with parents, mm -hmm. um, and so wonderful to see how you're engaging parents as you go through this pilot. I mean, I think process. it's just so valuable when, you know, home and school are speaking the same language, and, and I can only imagine the benefit of kids, okay. for the kids. And they, and the kids love it, because mm -hmm. they're smart. Yeah. And yeah. they get they to They like use, saying those words. Yeah, yeah they get to use, uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. they use a pen, not a pencil, because mm -hmm. we want to see their errors, so, so they're not correcting it and mm -hmm. erasing. Right. They're, we want to look at that, because it's very diagnostic agnostic mm -hmm. in our practice, but just all of those pieces and sharing that with the parents, it's its a powerful thing mm -hmm. for children to know and understand. It is. W Their instead language. of we did it always this way, so this is why we do it, mm -hmm. no, the students know the rules of language, they know the rules of spelling, mm -hmm. so now they can figure it yeah. out on their own. Yeah, and it is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know you and I were talking earlier, Lori, like some of the parents were like, in these aha moments right. and how powerful it makes and them I've, feel. I've had several that have been diagnosed with dyslexia uh, in their day and uh -huh. they they are so thrilled because you know it's hereditary so yes. mm -hmm. and they they only Can wish be. that they had that opportunity and they can see they're learning along with their kids sometimes about you know the rules of yes rules any child would be so fortunate mm -hmm. to be in your in your school district yeah. so we've talked about professional development for the teachers because we know really that's kind of the core mm -hmm. uh, patent for core teachers yes. and then Orton Gillingham training mm -hmm. as well as uh, there was some tier two support as well so in some of our sites like Sunday or uh, mm -hmm. Barton or what have you right um, so talk about maybe some resources that were new 
new to you, things that you um, have now that in your toolkit that you didn't have before? Oh, there's so many. many. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm sorry. No, uh, but it doesn't there, have to be an exhaustive list, but what are some but things? Things that, like yeah. e easy phonemic awareness activities okay. that any teacher can do All right. by a Hagerty book. Mm -hmm. Okay. It, it's a five, ten minute activity. You go through the lessons. You can, you can review it. You can do something new all the time. Chipper chat. Chipper chat. They chipper, love chat. chipper chat. Great. My grandkids love chipper chat yeah. too. So. It's a great tool. Mm -hmm. um, out online, go down and download red words. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are words that are only part of the word is mm -hmm. phonemic. The rest of the word, it breaks the rules. Mm -hmm. So they have to know and memorize those words. There's right. no two ways about it. So go out, download, download red mm -hmm. words, find out a way to teach your kids yeah. using that. Put posters, posters in your room, visual aids right. for students. Those anchors uh, yeah. for kids, mm -hmm. yes. And, mm -hmm. and don't hide them. This is right. not, we're not trying to trick kids. No. Put it up on the wall, let them find the resource. Mm -hmm. the, aren't, we're just trying to teach them how to find the resource. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, as adults, don't we look on the internet? We Google we everything to yeah. find find out. So why not post it in the classroom? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to hide, hide it. We're not trying to trick children. We're trying to teach them and make them independent readers. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we've there are what other, lots of other resources. Yeah, no, the th there was a thirty-minute phonics lesson that was in uh, a requirement of the pilot. Um, so, uh, was there some a program you used, or did you create something on your own? Or? We created our own, okay. pretty much with yeah. the yeah. Um, card deck and all yeah. those other kind mm -hmm. of things. Um, also, simple things like needlepoint squares, mm -hmm. because you want it to be multi-sensory. So, having students trace things. Mm -hmm. um, we do lots of gross motor, uh, mm -hmm. arm bumping, yeah. mm -hmm. sky writing, all of those strategies because remember not all kids are using the same portion of their brain right, those neural so, pathways right. so that we're helping them um, visually kinesthetically gross motor fine motor mm -hmm. all of those things there's a reason behind everything that yes. we do and the, and um, the number three is very important in Orton Gillingham. You mm -hmm. do everything you do three times mm -hmm. so that you're giving the child repetition of that skill and building mm -hmm. metacognition. Mm -hmm. You're not doing it just once and moving That's on. Right. Yeah, and that repeated practice, that perfect practice, practice. because uh, mm -hmm. it's not practice that makes perfect, it's perfect practice, practice. right? Yeah. So. And then cycling back. Mm -hmm. New learning becomes old learning and mm -hmm. it's constantly reviewed. Mm -hmm. You don't throw it away once yeah. you're finished with it's, it. You keep yeah. cycling back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the error correction, we talked about, you know, error correction as well because when kids make errors, oftentimes as teachers, if we don't know like an error correction procedure or what we should do, um, mm -hmm. that's so vital when kids, because kids are going to make errors for, for certain. So we want to talk a little bit about the error correction. Yeah, well, we, when, when they're reading, um, we'll do error correction and say they, they error on a B for, and say D instead of mm -hmm. B. So they trace on a table. On mm -hmm. a on a textured board, they'll say D says D, D says D, D says D. If it say vowel team A I, A I says A, A I says A, A I says A, and it's just that simple when they're reading. Right, and so uh, right away that yeah, error is corrected, and, and they're getting that memory mm -hmm. trace out and yeah. get and embedding another. Yeah. Right, and mm -hmm. I know like the the littler ones with the B's and the D's, and that yeah, that seems tricky. to make a big mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And well, really that's does. all that visual, yeah. auditory, kinesthetic, mm -hmm. tactile yeah. as well. Yeah, and I think too what we were talking about earlier today in the training about. Um, the consistency of the environment mm -hmm. uh, from classroom to classroom, building to building within the same district. So no matter where you go, you're going to see the same visuals, the same procedures. Yes. Um, the language is the same. You know, we mm -hmm. use the same language whether we're te teaching a vowel team or we're teaching the so cursive important. letter L. Mm -hmm. It's all the same. It's very consistent that way. And uh, the routines, the kid, the lessons are done in a specific order mm -hmm. from day to day to day, so they know what to expect. Fact. You know, kids mm -hmm. are rule followers. Yeah. And um, I think they that's, love it. And they, they like procedures. They, they, they find thrive on procedures. They, they, yeah, they find so comfort in routines. You know, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and you spend that little time, you know, working on those procedures and those routines, and then it, you. you know, life is much better and things go a lot quicker Absolutely. in your lesson. And like at first, it could, the teachers seem bogged down with the lesson, but once they get their groove going, it's it's, mm -hmm. it's quick. Yeah. Yeah. You know. And, and there was, I, I don't want to say it's all, was all rosy. No. no. There, was, <laughs> there, was, <laughs> there, there was There was resistance mm -hmm. um, to putting it into place. And um, I have to say, uh, give a shout out to Dr. John Bell, our superintendent, mm -hmm. because he really was extremely supportive in us putting this into place. We added, uh, and we were, we were very fortunate we were able to add 
people resources as well. We added an additional reading specialist throughout the pilot and um, four additional paraprofessionals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to help support us in our kindergarten classrooms. Mm -hmm. So, so um, the pilot was wonderful and, the, and thank you to mm -hmm. the General Assembly well, for the yes. money mm -hmm. to put it in place. Uh, but and the parents. <laughs> and, and the, a, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Di, give a shout out here to Daphne Uliano oh, and it, Diane oh, Riott. Oh, absolutely. And, oh my and, gosh, and the entire Michael Michael Monica Michael Michael Small. Small. The, yes. the committee that mm -hmm. really yes. took charge and, and put this all in place because we would not have benefited by no. Reap the Rewards, but in the end, I think our goal is to spread this across the Commonwealth. Yeah, I'm so appreciative I mean, of that. I, I really think that we need to try to provide videos and or on-site training. Mm -hmm. We have we have curriculum now. Mm -hmm. We have it well, all you together. You know, Patton's going to be partnering <laughs> with you on that. So we have it all together, and, and I think that we were we were trained and we made a commitment to the state and to these parents mm -hmm. that this wasn't just about Delaware Valley. Right. This is about making, this is about the ripple in the pond mm -hmm. and, and creating a lasting effect for children and families. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing you want to do is have a child feel defeated because they can't accomplish a, a, a task like reading. And reading is so complex. It, it is. is so when you it's look at Scarborough's skill, rope, right? it is just amazing. And and often we we previously as a reading specialist, you'd focus on one or two things no. and not understand that it really all has to mesh together. Because right. mm -hmm. if you're missing one piece of that rope, that's right. It's a braided that's gonna mm -hmm. that's gonna ravel apart. Mm -hmm. So it's it's critical. And we've been so fortunate, and we really need to be that ripple in the pond and mm -hmm. get it out there and share it with other people and. Lori and I have been going to yeah. different yes. presentations yes. and sharing the wealth, but that's not enough. No. That's just the start, and but we are very passionate about. <laughs> yeah. We're very passionate about you can making tell. a difference <laughs> for children, and and it's just so so important. Yeah, and I know you welcome visitors, and of course we we'll do. be visiting. Patton Absolutely. is going to work with you on the curriculum and think about ways that uh, we can work with you to share that with others and uh, have film crews come out and see some of the practice. I know the videos that great. you showed today. Yeah. I mean, teachers love seeing other teachers do that, but we are we are definitely your partners in this. And, okay. But we're very great, I have to say, very, very grateful that you are so giving and sharing of um, yes. your practices and the ability to come visit because it makes such a difference, I think, when teachers can actually oh, yes, see for it sure. and also hear, hear about that journey. You yeah. know, it, it, it can sometimes be bumpy, but um, you can see in, in the long run, of course, look how you can see how enthusiastic you are and how the outcomes for kids. So yeah, you want to talk absolutely. a little bit about the, the outcomes for kids. I know you were talking about a specific student today. So maybe you want to start with her because that's yeah, just so, my, uh, uh, but then maybe, you know, how all kids are kind of responding. I, well, I have to do 200 hours of tutoring this year again. And, but I have, a, I have groups and then I have one student that, that's my one-on-one. -on -one. And mm -hmm. um, she started off in like, I think she was like a 2-2 two -two or a 2-4 um, right. in STAR. And we, she just took her test the other day and she got a four. Yeah, seven, we were all which like, is amazing. And, it you know, is that's, amazing. That star is a very difficult test. It if anybody has sat and watched, mm -hmm. it's you know the comprehension is uh, especially to get a four point seven. But you change that child's life. Yeah, but you know we do you a know. lot with morphology, mm -hmm. which is you know is yep. big mm -hmm. and it really helps them. And um, uh, you can just see the kids as they're taking the test and they're trying to find the syllable yeah. types and the vowels that when you see them and they're that? finding the prefixes and mm -hmm. the suffixes and they're putting mm -hmm. their finger over and trying to figure out what the base word is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's just, it's incredible. It's incredible. And you said that our star scores above anything awesome. are just, just... They're soaring. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we started off with a simple thing of letter recognition in mm -hmm. kindergarten. Right, that's it. Uh, now that you're getting into third and fourth grade and, teach, and students are learning the morphology of language. They're learning yes. how to figure yes. it out. They're learning, you know, prefixes and suffixes and reading compound words and they're following the rules of spelling because if they don't know the word, okay, what's the root word? Right. Is this or a how CVC does, word? Or, and all right. That. right. Mm -hmm. And where, do, where does the, you know, where does the division occur in the mm -hmm. word? Right. So and then what kind of syllable type is it? Yeah. So that helps me with the vowel sound There's and all so of that. There's so much to know to do all there is. And, and you look at their faces and you see that mm -hmm. they're, it's kind of, you see the thinking mm -hmm. that's going yeah. on as yeah. they're as they're processing the language and, and mm -hmm. reading the words and it's just and it, now it's really impacting like we're thinking about phonics instruction and spelling instruction mm -hmm. but it's comprehension yeah. and they're figuring mm -hmm. it out yeah. and all those rules that we just we thought we knew intuitively there right. really are rules to it and if we explain 
the cog that we explain it and kids can cognitively understand it, mm -hmm. they can do it all. Right. It puts they the can power have in it their all. hands. It puts yeah. the power in their Absolutely. hands. Absolutely. Not does. just because I said so, like your mother. Yeah, it's spelled that way because I said That's so. Right. Right. You say it's like 85, the English language is like 85% reliable. It is. And if you know, so if you know the rules you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. and the generalizations, if yeah. you know. So yeah. we always thought, oh, it's just English, that's why it's, I know. you know, but yeah. it's. But there is a reason. There yeah. is a reason. And I, I don't know, I think as the years are going on, as our teachers are getting more experienced, it gets getting better even. It so, is. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, becomes, it becomes common it, knowledge it and just what we know and what yeah. we do. They really mm -hmm. understand. It's like you actually have uh, created a culture right. for the science of reading and yeah. structured language mm -hmm. and structured literacy and multi-sensory practices. Right. So yes. especially, you know, you're engaging the core teachers, your interventionists, yeah. your parents. Classroom teachers. Like you're wrapping around yep. the kid the right. kids totally I always think that um, kids with reading challenges have to be among the most courageous in the world because uh, what adult could walk into work every day in a place where they were not being successful and yet every day they do that and so it's so um, exciting when teachers and especially school district school leaders really commit to mm -hmm. the science of reading and um, give kids opportunities to become powerful and, and to and know how to read because we know that um, there's there's a pipeline from illiteracy to prison, right? Absolutely. So oh, yes. when we engage in these practices that you have and, and the we other dyslexia break, products, we have to break the, break the cycle. Yep. And you are changing lives. Yeah. yeah. So uh, the pilot, um, for the most part, no, there's been an extension, but for the first three years, were pretty intensive. Mm -hmm. um, and now you guys are part of the dyslexia pilot extension, mm -hmm. and we're looking at collecting data to see how these kids are doing over time, which is very exciting. But talk just a tiny bit about sustainability because um, I know uh, we always want to um, make certain that all these great things that we're doing are sustained. And so, of course, having Lori as a supervisor that is so proactive Trained and smart. Trainer. She's a trainer. Trainer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a trainer. Oh my gosh. Uh, so you you can build capacity on your own, right? right. And so, uh, what other things are you, could you share with that, uh, that you're doing to kind of maintain, maintain. and sustain? That, that's our. That was our hope from the very beginning because I didn't want it to be a okay. Three years we've yep. trained these yep. people and mm -hmm. then it goes by the ways, mm -hmm. wayside. So we. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted. I really wanted to build in um, supervisors yeah. as well as training so we have in-house built-in professional development mm -hmm. that we don't have to go to the outside. Our right. next step is to actually become a certified right. center We're work so, on that, that. so uh -huh. that we are right. self-contained and, and we don't have to worry about licensure under another right. organization, which is where we are right now. And thank you very much, Compass, out in, um, mm -hmm. out in the Western PA mm -hmm. in the Erie. But, um, but part of the whole process is, um, so we, we train our instructional assistants that are mm -hmm. pushing into the classroom. Mm -hmm. I really rely so heavily on, on my reading team. Mm -hmm. Lori is one of a, of a very nice large team that we mm -hmm. have throughout the district over four schools and we have uh, teachers trained in K through five buildings and then we have um, a K through two building which is where we where Lori is mm -hmm. and then they go across the parking lot to a three to five building and we have teachers trained in all of those levels wow. so that they are ac actual interventionists but then they also push into the classroom so when we get a new teacher mm -hmm. and they're not quite yeah. familiar with right. the strategies and they haven't had the advantage of participating in all of the things the pilot had to offer, um, we've kind of brought back in additional things. So for example, this week we had mm -hmm. letters training. Oh, awesome. So we brought IU folks up mm -hmm. to provide letters training to new staff mm -hmm. and people yeah. that didn't So it's, it's, it's a constant, it's, you're never... Revisiting, yes, correct. That's right. And mm -hmm. then provide intensive classroom help and assistance to teachers that request it. Um, and, and then it's just ongoing. Mm -hmm. and, and then the interventionists kind of just serve as literacy coaches mm -hmm. to, to new teachers, like to old teachers. Oh, yeah, because they'll come to us with questions when <laughs> yeah. we were first rolling this yeah. out. They uh -huh. would come. And then when they find that word that breaks the rule, they want to know why. Yeah. Well, sometimes there's exciting? no explanation. Yeah. Or if they like, have an idea yeah. to share. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Some of our classroom teachers just have the most dynamic way of delivering right. information. Mm -hmm. Things like crazy pointers that light up. Yeah. That yeah. just yeah. engage Just motivating kids. and yeah. engaging. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Or, yeah. or um, yeah. the one teacher that we watched in the video when they say it's a short vowel. So all the yeah, kids bend, doing, I saw they that. bend, they bend yeah. over when they do and something. And you have some uh, songs for Yeah, that. another Trick teacher has created a song for yeah. the red words that for are irregular yeah, for spelling right. sheet. And, uh, you know, teachers with motions like, Arr, a pirate. Yeah, yeah. The pirate. Yeah. Arr, you know, yeah. so they, yeah. they come up with all 
different, again, right. multi-sensory yeah, so I love that they're, you know, they're maintaining the fidelity and integrity yeah. and they're bringing themselves into, into it, it, which is so Absolutely. exciting. Yeah. Because we, sometimes there's this misconception when you have direct explicit instruction that it's, you know, just drill and kill. We're, really, it's drill and skill. skill. And the teachers, their personalities are still can, you The know, nuances are, that, that they bring to it yes. just, it just, it just creates more enthusiasm for what they're doing yeah, in the Especially classroom. when they see their kids succeed. Yes. Uh, I think that that's yeah, when yeah. you really see, like, mm -hmm. teachers are, uh, all teachers are really mm -hmm. vested in helping kids uh, succeed, especially in terms of helping them learn to read. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, and our data is just really off the charts. When I when we go back and we look at the initial data, again, mm -hmm. we are a har very high-performing school mm -hmm. district. We do very and well. And kudos to you, because yeah. many, you know, high-performers, they're like, oh, we don't need to improve. Right. Right. And we had, that, a, so. we had a bit of that, mm -hmm. but I think now that it's part of our culture mm -hmm. and our everyday practices and we're we really are seeing the data yeah. we're seeing that it really does work we're seeing families that are engaged yeah. um, kids that love it they mm -hmm. you know you used to have the kid that oh I have to go to reading yeah. you know I have to go to pull out reading right. they're now they're, like, they're yeah, I have to go. Do I, the other kids don't <laughs> I get to go don't I get to go uh -huh. with Mrs. O'Malley I know yeah. I've had so. parents that when they test out of coming to reading they're calling me up and saying the please no <laughs> 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 please uh, no because yeah. they, they love it so much yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah and you can tell how dedicated you are oh, and, thank and you. how Appreciate passionate it. you are it is truly wonderful and and not all the not all of the um, districts that were part of the pilot mm -hmm. did Orton Gillingham. We were just fortunate to have that program. Yeah, many of but them, there are many, many of them did, or they did. Uh, they did do like an Orton Gillingham base for sure. For right, sure. Right. right. Um, when we looked at tiered intervention and uh, as well in the in the core, uh, mm -hmm. not to the degree that that you guys have uh, really moved forward with that. So I'm excited to to learn more and share that with others. Right. Oh, and so great. grateful that you're so generous with what you've learned. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. So if people want to come visit, they can come. Um, visit. Now contact in the us. description, I will put your contact information and you did do a presentation today both of you mm -hmm. um, Lori really focusing on uh, what does it actually look like the how mm -hmm. and um, you know Peg really sharing the journey and so we'll make sure those are attached to this webcast okay, great. Um, but so excited uh, that you welcome visitors and you're saying, like please come please come because because the it is to make a difference and mm -hmm. it's again as I said before it's not just for Delaware Valley students no there are a lot of students out there that could benefit from this knowledge mm -hmm. and we and just teachers. have to help the teachers we just mm -hmm. have to get them yeah. there and mm -hmm. and pre-service people come on come and I visit know. see what we're doing yeah. um, universities that have master's degree mm -hmm. in reading come, come on come mm -hmm. please come yeah there are <laughs> um, just do you want to mention in the state of pennsylvania um the international for some folks maybe not watching who don't know the International Dyslexia Association does have knowledge and practice standards that anchor what teachers should know and be able to do in terms of teaching reading. And some universities have uh, applied um, through IDA to be accredited, uh, showing that they use these standards in their syllabus and their coursework. There are five in Pennsylvania that have been accredited. That's yes, they're mo a lot, most of them are in the Philadelphia area. Um, Drexel, Arcadia, Temple, and St. Joe's, and Clarion University um, out in the um, western, western part of the state. So. There are five, you know, exemplars really who are out there and others who are moving in that direction. Great. But of course, it would be wonderful if all teachers had, yes. you know, this knowledge in pre-service through their reading certs and uh, masters and, you know, deeper and deeper mm -hmm. as you've gone through. So um, thank you for inviting them. Um, we are, have been just thrilled. Anything else you want to share before we close? No. It really just has been a wonderful experience for yeah. us uh, in our district and getting to know and meet other people mm -hmm. through across the Commonwealth and and I shout out to Lindell and mm -hmm. Fran Rakomsky, mm -hmm. yes. who, through their leadership, along with the the steering committee from the parents, yes. this would not have taken no, place. No, it would not have. And for sure. uh, we are. And I'm uh, I'm sorry that I kept bothering you, Lynn. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I knew I knew this was just something we had to do. We're glad you bothered us. Right <laughs> she made a good choice. Something she made we a had wise to choice. do. But um, <laughs> I would still be emailing you if you had. <laughs> <laughs> but it really so. has been um, truly. Um, a, a labor of love for our mm -hmm. faculty, and they are truly my heroes. Yeah, they really are. Yeah, well, so, thank you, Peg, yeah. and thank you, Lori. Oh, it's just been an honor to, to spend here. the morning thank with you. you, and thank you for spending this time to do this webcast so more people can hear about your journey and learn from it. Um, I'd like to thank John Ragsdale, the producer of our webcast series. Thank you for joining us for this Leaders and Learning and Literacy webcast, and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you. Thank you.